Welcome to Bench Time with Home CSB. Today I'm going to cover the features of the Track and Park board and show how it's different from our basic Tiny Tracker series. Here I've got a Track and Park in one of our standard en enclosures. This allows easy mounting to the array, an adjustment of the uh, tracking angle, the uh, photo sensors go edge on like this and if brighter this side then your actuator should you know move things that way um, so I've got this tiny tracker here um, hooked up with a little remote controlled relay and attached to this actuator um, so this can be used to trigger the uh, special park function and in, I've got another video uh, where I show you how to do that with uh, the tiny VCS uh, inter interfacing with an analog output uh, anemometer like this. So um, before we get started, here's a uh, a basic um, actuator motor. So you can see the uh, the, the lobes here, which uh, trigger the limit switches, and uh, but at the other end here, there's this little wheel with a dot on it that spins around, and there's a little reed switch underneath this. So this is a magnet, and each time it spins around, it opens and closes the uh, the little reed switch right there. So that creates a pulse signal, which the track and park can detect to uh, keep track of the actuator position. So let me let me zoom in here a little bit and kind of cover some of these uh, connections. So, over here on the, the right, I have the uh, two power input ground positive, this is 24 volts, and then the, the red and yellow are going to the actuator motor, while the, uh, the green and white are connected to the, uh, the pulse sensor on the actuator. Over here, we have the uh, trigger for the park function. This is coming from this little relay unit. So I've got 12 volts coming in on these here from from battery and I, I'm taking the the ground that, and just bridging that straight over to the park trigger and the positive take over here to the common on the relay and then on the normally open side that's sent here, so when we press the button, it'll close the relay. It'll send a momentary signal there, trigger the park function. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, turn the turn the power on here. This this track and park hasn't been um, turned on before. This is, so this is just like it would be when you receive it, and when it first time startup, it's automatically going to do the part configuration procedure. So we're going to watch that and let that happen. So let's just kind of first note that the, the actuator is sort of in a um, random position here. Zoom back out for the actuator. All right. So I'm going to turn the so we see that the actuators, you know, extended a little bit. I'm going to turn turn on. It's going to retract the actuator. Well, first we get the little wag. So it went out, and came back in. So we know the polarity is connected correctly. Now it's going to retract all the way, so it can reset the pulse count. And we didn't really know what position it was in when it started up. All right, got to the beginning. It's going to reset the pulse count. The little wag right there indicates the start of the uh, part configuration suite. So 
Okay, so now the motor is just going to run, and I'm going to let it do its thing, and we'll just watch how the uh, the standard position comes out here. And just to eyeball this here, I'm going to use this tape measure so we can uh, sort of guess the, uh, the park position. So I think this is an 18 inch actuator. We sh should see about a 16 inch stroke. I'm not sure if the limit switch has been messed with on this. Okay, so we hit the limit, a little over 15. And so right around, right around here, we should re retract at this point and call that the uh, park position. Okay, close enough. So that indicates the park position with that little dual wag. Now I've got the uh, light should be striking in from the west LED a little bit more. Hope so. Now it's extending the actuator. Pretend the array is turning. We center it up and the actuator stops. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn on power to my relay. You might have seen a little flash there. And now when I press the button, it'll trigger it to go back to the park position. Now it's going to stay there for uh, up to a half an hour, uh, or yeah, it will, for at least a half an hour. Um, it'll stay there for a half an hour after the last pulse that it gets from here. So this is simulating a a gust of wind. Um, basically, if if we had the uh, anemometer hooked up, and you can imagine. Gust of wind comes along, sends a high enough signal, would cause our uh, tiny VCS window interface to to send a pulse, just like the like I'm pressing the relay right now. And so each time that happens with the, the track and park, it says a uh, resets a little timer, and it won't do any tracking for the next half an hour. And that's all intended to allow you a chance to have your array in a position that will minimize wind load and, and give it the best chance of surviving whatever storm might be going on. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the, the customizable park position. I'm going to press and hold down the button. So. Just as before, when I first turned it on, now it's going to it's going to retract all the way. Get a little wag now. Now it's going to start the sweep just as it did before. But this time I'm going to set the custom position. So I'm going to say, actually, actually I want to, you know, like make make this my my part position. So I press the button, it gives me a little wag, it says, okay, I understand. Do you want that spot that it'll be 
So anyway, that's the basic features of the tracking part, and I hope you found this video useful. Be sure and visit the homecsp.com website for more information about solar tracking resources. Thanks for watching.